All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about camera calibration in OpenCV using Python. So we will start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into the coding example. So by the end of this video, we could see how we could take uh, a distorted image here and then undistort the image. Okay, so what is camera calibration? So camera calibration is used to obtain the camera parameters. So we have two types, what's called intrinsics and extrinsics. So for the intrinsics, what you have is the focal length, and then you have the principal point, which is the center of your image, which we call the CX and CY. And then you have the distortion parameters, which you call K1, K2, uh, P1, P2, and K3. Okay, so you have the extrinsics. So for this one, you have the rotation matrix. Uh, typically, it's a three by three, but OpenCV has a three by one uh, implementation. And then you have a translation, which is a three by one matrix. Okay, so what is camera calibration? So to really understand this, you have to know the camera model. So for the camera model, you typically have a camera center. And then this here, what you have is called the image plane. And then this point out here is your world point. So for, a camera, cali for like a camera calibration, the idea is we want to find these parameters so that if we were to project um, this point onto the image plane, how do we project it correctly? So all of these parameters we need to find needs to be accurately determined. Okay, so the general equation is here. You have a little x equals big P times big X. So this big X is typically going to be your world point. So you have a x, y, and z, and then this one here is just for a filler because of the dimension of this camera matrix here. And then this camera matrix you can see here is a three by four. Sometimes you'll see it as a different um, different size if they were to like truncate part of it off. That's why you might see this sometimes as like a three by three, um, but same idea for here. So here you get the image point, which is our little x. So this is the actual points on our image, okay? So here, what is the camera calibration? So if we break up that matrix, right, what you want to see is uh, the P matrix that we looked at right here can really be broken down into two matrices. So um, here we have our intrinsics matrix. So this is the part that looks like a three by three. And what this tells us is the focal length and then the PX and PY. Sometimes you'll see it as CX, CY, um, depending on where you're from. And then here is the extrinsic. So this is your rotation matrix and this is your translation vector. So that's what this is down here. And then for the distortion, you have the different coefficients. You have K1, K2, P1, P2, K3. And how that all comes in is if you were to map your points from your original points, you have um, different mapping based off of what these coefficients are. So this example down here is what's called a barrel distortion. So um, depending on what the distortion coefficients are, you'll have a different mapping based off of these equations. And you have what's called the radial and tangential. So um, you'll have different uh, distortion factors based off of which direction you're looking at. Okay, so why do we need camera calibration? So Camera calibration is typically good for applications of like AR, SLAM, 3D reconstruction, or just for um, having an undistorted image. Okay, so how does camera calibration work? So first off, as you've seen in a lot of uh, cases, people take chessboard images, so that's used for calibration. And what we do is we find all the corners inside our chessboard, so we don't find the outer ones, just the inner ones. So we find all the inner corners and then we find, do some process to find the best location where those corners are. After you find all the corners, what you can do is set up this um, matrix. So we looked at the projection matrix. So here we're looking at a mapping between our world points and our image points. So we take that and then we could parameterize it here into this way. So we could make each column uh, written in this way. And then here we have the, the different parts of our rotation and translation. So the idea is you get a system of equation and you move it to one side. So then you get the form of like AX equals to zero. You wanted to get your equations into this form. And then you essentially just solve for your H 
And then we also make some assumption if, you know, you have typically you have like x, y, z, but if z is on an image plane, we could say that the z value is zero. So there's some assumptions that we do. So after you set up your uh, system of equations, you could solve, use a solver to find out what the actual parameters are. Okay, so let's jump right into the coding. Okay, so here we have our camera calibration program. So we're gonna import the modules that we need here. And then we have a function here we have called, it's called calibrate. So the first function we're gonna run is called run calibration. So run calibration will call calibrate and we'll set show picks to true. Okay, so what does this calibrate function do? So this calibrate function, what it does, okay, so what this function does is you can see right here, we read in the image and then we get our calibration directory and then we'll get all of our images inside our directory. So we first initialize the number of rows and columns of our chessboard. So this is very important. You wanna make sure that you counted the number of uh, corners correctly. And then you set up a termination criteria. So here are our termination criteria. We could do a combination of the two. So this is gonna be a tuple of three values. And then if you re recall, we have, if we jump to our calibrate function, which we'll see we have, um, so here we have the termination criteria, which passes, it passes into the corner sub picks. So if we look at the corner sub picks, we have this criteria here. So these are the criteria that we look at the three tuple with the enum, the stopping conditions for the error and the max iteration. So here we're gonna do a combination of the two. And then what we wanna do here is create some world points. Okay, so the world points is, what this does is it'll help us, um, we're gonna use these points to project it on later, but then for now we're just um, creating uh, like numbers from like one to the number of rows and columns as placeholders for the world points. Okay, so we're gonna create two empty lists here to store our points as we calibrate our camera. So here to find the corners, we go through all of our uh, images and we're gonna read in the image, convert it to grayscale, and then we're gonna call the find, find corners, um, find chest board corners function here. So what this does is it takes in your image, which we, we're doing grayscale, um, and then we have a pattern size, which we have n rows by n column, and then the flags, which we're not using. And then what this will return is uh, your return value of the corner was found, and then your corners. Um, your corners here, which is a n by one by two NumPy array of your x and y coordinates, okay? So this should be uh, two, because we're using grayscale. But anyway, so here you have, if we found the corners, what we want to do is append it to the list of all our world points. And then we want to pass it into the corner subpicks. So this, this corner subpicks function here, what this does is, it's gonna find a more accurate location of your corners, okay? So here we pass in our image grayscale, the corners that we found, the window size, which you're using as 11 by 11, and the zero zone, that's the region in the search that is not used to voice singularity. So negative one, negative one means none, so we're not using that. And then we have our termination criteria that we just talked about. So after that, we append all of our um, corners that we we find, and then we're we're gonna plot it out here if we say show picks. So here we have our draw chessboard, um, draw chessboard corner. So from here we pass in our image, our pattern size, our corners, and then if the corners were found, and then uh, that will draw draw or modify our image with the corners. Okay. And then the final step is the calibrate camera. So what this function will do is do the actual calibration. So it's gonna help us find the intrinsics and extrinsics. So we pass in the world points list, the image points list. So these will be um, a size of n pick list of n by three arrays. And same for the image points can be an n pick list of n by one by two array. And then the rest is gonna be the image size here, it's gonna be a tuple, and then um, for some of the stuff, we're gonna set as none because we're not using, okay? And then the return value 
you have a reprojection error, which is a float. You have a camera matrix, which we'll need is a three by three matrix. Your distortion coefficient, which is a one by five, and then your RVEC and TVEC will be um, tuples of three by one for all the individual uh, cases. Okay. So here we're gonna print out the camera matrix and then the reprojection error to take a look. And then this logic here is gonna save our calibration parameters, which we will use in our later video. Um, so we just want to prevent running two programs, so that's why we're saving it. So if we go ahead and run this, we could see our calibration happening. So each of our pictures, we're running it and then finding all the corners. And you can see that all of these are nicely done and all the corners were found. So if I, if you see here, we print out our calibration matrix, right? So, and we have a reprojection error in pixels of 0 0.1687, which is pretty good. And you can see that we have our F value, which is the same here. And then this is our um, X and Y. So those all look pretty good. And some things to make note of when you're calibrating I would say make sure, I mentioned the corners, you want to make sure to count the number of corners. Um, you typically need at least 10 images, and the images should be taken in different planes, so you kind of want to rotate and pivot it so they're not on the same plane, otherwise you'll get a degenerate case, which um, your solver will not be happy. And then you want to make sure your entire chessboard is inside the image. Okay, so next up we're going to try to remove the distortion. So we have a function here called remove, remove distortion. So what this does here is we're going to read in our picture. We have a special picture here that we're trying, we're going to try to undistort. And then what we have here is we're getting the height and width of our image. And then we have our function get optimal new camera matrix. So that's a function that we're using. And what this does is it computes the new camera matrix to account for distortion. Okay, so based off of the distortion coefficients that we have, we could figure that out. So what this takes in is gonna be the image size, alpha, and the new image size. So uh, for the sizes, it's gonna be the same. That's why we're passing in width and height. And then this alpha here, what this means is a scaling between zero and one. So for alpha of zero, it means that the rectified image zoomed and shifted so only valid pixels are visible. And then for alpha one, all the pixels from the original image are retained in the rectified image. So we're going to go ahead and use <clears throat> the one option here to, <clears throat> to retain all the pixels. Okay, so here we have an undistort function. So for the undistort, what this does is, so for the undistort function, what this does here is you have um, your source, which is your image. We're calling this image here. And this is going to be a NumPy array. And then we have a camera matrix is going to be a three by three. And then our distortion, the distortion coefficients. And the the, source, the dis, DST is like the destination. <clears throat> we're not using that but because we're using it as an output here. So this is a image undistorted. OK, so that's what this function is. And then what we're going to do is draw the line. So we're going to draw the line to visualize how much distortion is happening. And then we're going to draw the same set of line in this um, undistorted image and compare the results. So if I go ahead and run this, we can see that we have a picture of a chocolate here, right? And it's very subtle, but if I zoom in here, you can see that if I drew if I draw a straight line, there's a little bit of black that you're seeing. So you could tell that that image, there's a little bit of curvature happening. And then now that after distortion, um, it pretty much matches the edge of that uh, part of the chocolate. Okay, so you can see part of the distortion has been removed. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.